Okay. Hmm. Today I want to do a short podcast. Uh, a very, very short one, very brief one. Asking a simple question such as why do we not want to see Liberia prosper? It's a simple question. And I've not invited you here if you're not a member of the intelligentsia. Let's qualify ourselves. You don't need to graduate from college or finish high school or speak several languages, dialects, be an academician, a politician, a theologian, uh, to be a member of the intelligentsia. You need to have the ability to think, and to think wisely and be a critical thinker. You cannot tell me that Mambu Suda selling in the market is not an intelligent woman. In fact, it is a level of intelligence that propels her to go into Baho Pepe for 500 LD, comes and set it down into smaller piles, and then make 1,000 LD. Is she not intelligent? She is intelligent to understand that her children have to go to school and they need uniform books, pencils, and what have you. And you who claim to be intelligent and have gone to school and have acquired knowledge, you still cannot do anything with it. Your skills, nothing. But you go around from office to office begging. So I want to make it clear. Members of the intelligentsia are people who have the ability to think critically. Those are members of the intelligentsia. It doesn't matter what side of the divide you find yourself. It doesn't matter. So some people think, oh, you will call my name when I say grab. I just blocked one just now. I just block one because my team, I can't call you here so you don't have to watch me. So you come with your crazy insults, I just close you one time. I ask a simple question to members of the intelligentsia to make them think as we go through what I have set up to do in the next 10 minutes and depart. Why do we not like to see Liberia prosper? Why? If we're not killing each other in a senseless, brutal civil war, we're killing our children for ritualistic purposes and somehow expect that a generation will grow up to prosper. It's not going to work. We literally banjo our resources and we expect Liberia to prosper. It's not going to work. When we are given monies, we steal the money. And yet we want Liberia to prosper. It's not going to work. When we should come together on a united front and fight for what is right for Liberia, we fuss and we messed up. When Mara A is doing a piece of job and doing it to the best of her ability, we will fight her because she does not belong to the same tribe, the same party, or she does not have the same thinking. I like what someone said. One of the attributes of the intelligentsia is to be tolerant. But not to be tolerant where you take insults. No, that's not tolerance, that's stupidity. Because someone just jump on and cost you, cost your mind, your power. 
Then you say you got to be tolerant. No, that's not tolerance. That's stupidity. You checkmate them quickly, expeditiously, fast, and furiously. You do that. I'm here today because of a couple of issues I believe I need to address. All of us do not need to come from the same party. We don't need to believe in the same principles or we don't need to believe in the same policies that drive our party agenda, our individual agenda, our collective efforts uh, from a tribe. No. No. So let me start with one of the first things I want to talk about. The issue with Julie Andy, number one. And everything I will spend only one minute, maximum two. One day, one group say Julie Andy stay long there 33 decades. Therefore, they needed someone with fresh thinking, fresh innovation, fresh blood, someone to come and try something different. Well, the president, in his wisdom, says, I need. This man to do the job. Boom. We say, oh, because a woman went to Cloud We Are Foundation, she didn't have to go to Cloud We Are Foundation. And it's not the reason why she was changed. But we politicized that. Remember the word I'm using? We politicized it because we wanted to score political points. Two, the president gets invited to South Korea. Oh, he go away again. What did he bring from South Korea? If you are invited to my house, and I say, for example, Mary Fabulous, you are invited to my house. Or Mr. Kule, you are invited to my house. Or Mr. Lloyd, come to my house, please. I need you to come and visit me. You expect me I tell Mr. Lloyd to come to my house. Then Mr. Lloyd said, you get food there. You will give me one bottle of oil. You will give me chicken soup. What sort of ignorance on display is that? Some invitations are meant to hold consultation. And consultation will pave the way to bilateral relationship or negotiations for you to get things. But South Korea said, we are inviting you to come to this event. You expect Joseph Baga to say, what are you getting for me? You ain't getting nothing, I'm coming. Amen. Sometimes when I sit down, the same people today, let me be very blunt, running CDC today, is the one responsible for where CDC is and is the one that will be responsible for CDC disappearing from the political scene like NDPL or any other party that disappeared before them because of this thinking right here. You advance nothing but childish behavior. Oh, you go to a game, bring nothing. Follow the events. Follow the events. Political points is what you want to score. But we politicize everything. Why do we hate to see Liberia prosper? By going there, a lot of things were achieved. You go to some other country for three days, four days, you expect to craft an agreement in the absence of stakeholder meetings. In the absence of the law and the lawmakers, meaning the attorney general and the legislature, how are you crafting this agreement? It's the same thing our friends then did, agreement after agreement. Ibomath, Eton, the 50 billion, billion with a B. No, a mature government does not do that. You sign a memorandum of understanding and you work from there 
through negotiations and get to an agreement, sanctioned, approved by the justice minister and that of the lawmakers, the legislature. Responsible governors. You made all the noise. The president goes to China. Oh, the China trip was a success. But we, we, we wait to see it. No. Oh, the overhead bridge, we don't want to talk about it. It was his vision. Do you know how many of you watching and listening under the tune of my voice you know how many visions you have had? Visions are not reality. And just because you have a vision does not mean you have completed a project. A vision is something you see happening. But if you don't work towards it, it will not happen. And if it does not happen, your vision was only your vision. Or your vision will become somebody's mission. And until that mission is accomplished, your vision is meaningless. Oh, it was his vision. It was her vision. Come on. The Chinese left Liberia because... We voted against them three different times. We voted against the human rights records at the time when little children were being sodomized in this country. Rape was at its highest peak. Auditors were dying in their numbers. But we were voting to criticize China instead of correcting or self-correcting. And so the Chinese left. How is it your vision now? How is it your vision? So whether it was Madame Salif, President Weir, A.B. Joe Buaka, there are certain things we must not politicize. We must come together and work towards it because it's for our country. When President Buaka went to, uh, what you call it, China recently, I was there. I was there. People started saying oh, all sorts of things. Oh, they're making presentation. One of those things, uh, let me share with you real quick, put it right here. Okay, let me share with you. This was a presentation that was done in China. We went to China. Liberia, Development True Investment, a presentation by Jerry Lee McMatthew Pierre. This is what we presented to the Chinese people in Shenzhen. All the billionaires sitting there. And this was the quote from the president himself. So let's look at it. Our path to progress our vision. Dubbed arrest. Agriculture in parentheses, rules, rule of law, education, sanitation, tourism. Defines the development path we set for our people. We must and will harness opportunities in agriculture, rules, and other infrastructure development. Improve the rule of law. Reaching the education sector. Improve sanitation and unlock the potential of tourism. We believe the economic linkages these will create and their reinforcements of each other in meeting our developmental goals will help arrest and reverse years of economic downturn. Even the Chinese were clapping. And then we presented to them the agenda for inclusive development from there, we explain everything in Shenzhen, starting with agriculture. This was a whole presentation done to the Chinese. This had to do with the roads. 
we can go on and on the rule of law. Education. Education, sanitation, tourism. Now, Eugene, why are you doing this? You do not go to people country and say, you got to give us small oil so we can go eat you. No, that's not how it works. We went to a forum on China, Africa, cooperation how do we cooperate as a continent vis-a-vis -vis the asian giant china and in particular our country liberia what do we do to benefit from the sum of money allotted to the continent of which we are a part And so, when things like these happen, as members of the intelligentsia, we owe it to our country to push the agenda for everything to happen. Note, note, President Selly had an agenda for, I think, 2016. President we are had the pro-pro agenda. Today, we got the arrest agenda. Why are we having agenda leaders after leader? Why? It's because we have to exhaust a developmental agenda before we can start talking Tabata. Popo agenda, arrest agenda. Why agenda? Why can't we just have meetings? No, meetings will have agenda. So we got to exhaust the agenda. Liberia must have that agenda. He says, so Eugene, where are we right now? President is about to go to Canada at another forum, at another conference. Madam Salif is already there, I'm told. World leaders are there. We're supposed to go to market our quest to succeed as a nation. Yet, you're on the other side praying for the downfall of your country. And when somebody goes say something, y'all will take it out of context. But you know me. Me, I just do also y'all. I don't scare nothing. You already say I kill up. I'm not afraid of controversy. No, I'm not. Because I speak truth to power. We always against the progress Liberia should make. And we do it in ways that we think is funny. It's not funny. Which brings me to the actual thing I want to discuss today for five minutes. Who started this whole organization of African unity business that today morph into what you call African Union? Who started it? Don't worry, you're my ear, I'm waiting. Who started it? It was birthed by William Vakanarak Shadrach Tottenham. Of Liberia, Dr. Osajefu Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, Ahmed Seku Toure of Guinea. Where did they meet? In Sanikole, Nimba County. You go there today now, Chaklada, whole area. The Organization of African Unity was what gave birth to what is today called the African Union. Liberia was a founding member of the League of Nations that today gave birth to the United Nations. Liberia was the beacon of hope on the continent of Africa. Liberia led the liberation struggle for the independence of Africa. Liberia negotiated a countless number of deals and provide a sanctuary to the likes of Nelson Mandela, to the likes of Blighting, W.E. Du Bois, Baby Doc, Jean Duvalier of Haiti, the Sudanese. What are you talking about? 
every continent revere this small country and every country in Africa or kingdom look up to this great nation called Liberia. We were the diplomatic vessel to which they channel their grievances. And today, today, after a brutal civil war, Africa finds a path. Liberia has presided over the General Assembly before. Do you know that? Or you don't even know? Look for the name Angie Brooks Randall and look at the images of her presiding from a tiny country of about 2 million people at the time. Why do we not like to see this country prosper? As small as Liberia is, she made her case to echo us. She said, we have had three successive elections. The one that put Charles Taylor in the chair, the one that put Ellie in the chair, the one that put George Weah in the chair, and now the fourth one that put Joseph Walker. And yet, we remain the beacon of hope and the shining star of democracy on the continent of Africa. The world is watching us. We had our elections without any fight. ECOWAS says, go and take the non-permanent seat and represent us once again. We took our case to the AU. Looking at our records, over the last couple of decades, the AU say, go and represent us once again. Two blessings. And then we come back to our own people. The foreign minister says, let's call on our people who have kept the peace and led the nation, they are alive, to be witnesses to this great move for us to represent our continent once again. I'm sorry, I'm saying the thing, tears come into my eye. And so the right Madam Salif, she is happy. The right JNB, he is happy. They sent for Akinrelli, Banki Akinrelli or so. She is excited. Lema Bowie is excited that Liberia has found herself amongst the committee of nations and playing a leadership role once again on the continent. And they invite President Weir. And the stooges around him does not even see that it is an honor, a privilege, and a dignified approach to solidify his position once again at the United Nations where he once served as peace ambassador and to honor his own legacy of being a representative for this great country from the time he was a teenager. The buffoons around him once again are posting letters. Oh, even a prominent newspaper goes under the mud to make a few dollars to say, government of Liberia seek President Weah's help. Was it President Weah alone that he contacted? What about Madam Salif? What about Lehman Bowie? What about Councillor Wallace? What about Nyombli Kanga Lawrence? What about all these people that they contacted to add their voices to the AU and the, and the, and, and, and the ECOWAS? The other people did it with all no noise. We call on our own people to do it. Then you say, and you're begging us now to go United Nations. Who begging you? Is that why you drove people from around this man? Because a sound-minded person will see it where President Weah can sit down again behind the camera and say, when I was called upon the first time to serve my country wearing jersey, I was about 18 years old. And I answered the call of duty. When I retired from football, 
I was called upon again to serve my people and to lead my nation. I answered the call of duty. When my country needed a peace ambassador, I answered the call of duty. And today, I have been called and chosen to help lead my country to a prominent seat on the United Nations Security Council, a non-permanent seat. I accept and I am going to make sure that I push with everything I have. No. No. The dummies who did not go to school will not do something progressive. In their little minds, President Weah has been helped, asked to help. And that's something he should choose whether to do it or not. Why do we hate for our country to make progress? Why? Won't you feel proud as a Liberian if you are once again placed amongst the committee of nation? Should it be the success of an individual or the failure of a group of people or an individual that should define whether we make progress or not? When will we grow up? The level of ignorance on display is increasing. But it's not going to stop the progress of this country. The last time I checked, I didn't hear people complaining about LEC. The last time I checked, I didn't hear people complaining that the roads were not passable to the southeast. The last time I checked, I didn't hear people complaining that gas price was way up or increasing. In fact, nobody complained about it dropping astronomically. Mm -mm. And because the price of gasoline and fuel has reduced significantly, the cost of transportation is not high. And because the cost of transportation is not high, rice and other things go into the hinterland, Prices have dropped. And then we get our bit of oil and pepper in high supply from those era, areas because the roads are not only passable, but the people find it easy to transport their goods to the capital where the population is estimated to be over 1.5 million. Where are we? Why? Why? Do we hate to see our country progress? Why? I've not heard anybody say the government owe me for one month. I've not heard that yet. No? So if we are making progress, we need to come together to make that progress and forget the politics. Somebody come up and say they live for me. Where the CDC party headquarters is, is my land. Before CDC came there, me and Archibald Bonade been fighting over this land. You had a code record here. Whatever decision the court takes, you say the government behind it. Before we are became president, before we are government, go and ask him. There was a battle for that land. Throughout his presidency, the battle ensued. After his presidency, the battle continued. So what does government have to do with something that happened before E.D. Joe Town? What does government have to do about it? If you own somebody's land, buy it. If you don't buy it, the person will move you from there. It's, that's it. You are a tenant. You are a renter. You, will, you lease the land. That's it. What should we do? What should we do? So to you, the members of the intelligentsia, I implore you today to disregard these people. We are making maximum progress in minimum time. Check how long we've been in office. 
Take a tour. See the work of the CSA boss. See the work of Mo Ali. See the work of the Public Works Minister. Go and see the work of Dabba Jala at the LRA. Go and see the work of the Mines and Energy Minister, Wilmot Pay. Go even look at their buildings. See in seven months what these boys are doing in this country. See. People have six years to do it. People are completing it in less than one year. That's what happens when you employ qualified people. How much noise you see around here? Jerry Lee McPier holds press conferences twice a week. The press secretary every Friday. What? Why do you not like to see your country prosper? Now, no, we will not follow you. We will not follow you. We will not follow you. What we have to do, we will do. And show um, people out there know what's up. And we will continue to make progress. From Canada, the team will travel again to New York. If you don't like, if you don't like it, you don't like the progress, I will advise you take advantage of the free movement of ECOWAS citizens throughout the sub-region, go to Guinea or Sierra Leone and relax. You will be back in 2029 or 20, probably 69. But those of us that want to make progress, regardless of our religious beliefs, our gender, um, regardless of our political affiliation, we are going to stand together as Liberians. We will support the government and we'll be critical thinkers for ourselves. Um, the only thing I, found, I find disturbing in this country, as I sit here right now, it's not the only thing, but the only thing that is most disturbing to me is for a person to study it and when they get ready to graduate, you charge them 400. Amen. Complete nonsense. But I wish God's blessing upon all of us and let's come together and make progress. For me, I will not talk. Every day, people come here to take pictures. People walk in the yard just to see the place. People come up to the compound and just say, thank God. You know, and that's what makes me feel good. We're moving. Lots of work going on here right now and I'm busy. So, peace. I'm going on to inspect some other work. Then from there, I go to civil service. They sent for me. For the one guy I fired. And I fired him. And I have his file here. He two of his record that show stealing. The other one showed derelation of duty. Then he did it to myself. After several warnings, verbally, one day I just got fed up and said, you know what? Sorry, you gotta go. We got work to do. You gotta go. No playing yet. Okay. The other one said, You yeah, you say all roads in Liberia are okay. I said the roads to the southeast. The road to the southeast is now passable. I'm not responsible for you not going to school. I didn't tell you to eat your school fee. You go sit down and plow weave on your hair. Then you can't even say, somebody finish speaking English, you must speak your dollar. I told you to speak your dollar. You don't know my trap. I'm a day man. So you understand English, move on here, they play now for you. I said the road to the southeast. Everybody heard me clear. I didn't say all roads in Liberia were good. Can't again. You don't ask scared of trouble. You know, I'm scared of trouble. Government is continuity. When you get over four or five warning, then that the verbal one, before I say the written warning in your file, what will you need again? Also, everybody that can't say will get you warning. I'm not responsible for that other poor PADM classes you took, my brother. Public administration. Yeah? Simple thing. That's why every employee has a file. Yeah? That your fire, they fire. Anything you do, they put it inside here. You get plenty of warning already here. And you say no rating warning. I'm not responsible for that. 
Yeah, fire one person. You don't say Liberian citizens with S. I'm, I'm charged with the responsibility to manage this place. Part of the reason why we are succeeding here, here, is because we are working. Okay? Jena, how may I have your son help to you? Bye, guys. Uh, Jena, Jion is in the house. <laughs> Chief, that 